Oh, I didn't have one. Thank you, Wally. And that's the whole thing. What more vindication can you give? This was probably the one time I should have been scared. <laughs> Very apprehensive, for sure. Liftoff clock started, and our clock started. I had known, because I had flown my Mercury flight on Atlas, that didn't feel right. That was not a liftoff. The mission rule was, if it settled back to the pad or didn't lift off, and then it started, you eject. And I said, we didn't lift off. But they said the clock started, but there's no other motion in this vehicle other than that clock starting. No, that wasn't a liftoff. Tom Stafford was ready to punch. He looked at me and said, no, no. <laughs> Frank Borman calls me his hero for not having punched that because he was up there waiting for us. What happened, a wire had come loose on this case, and that caused us short, which then shut down the engine. But when you think about the engineers and the who came out there and, and re-rigged that, that's unreal. Borman was a class of 50 out of West Point. So when we got very close to the other spacecraft, Tom held up the sign that we had prearranged, beat Army. <laughs> Three Navy guys against one other West Pointer. The, the sequel to that, though, which was really horrible, woman said, look at that sign, it says beat Navy. Tom pulls it down, looks at it. <laughs> so we lost the, ver the verbal translation. <laughs> After the rendezvous, we couldn't dock, by the way, because they, they were almost in shirt sleeves up there for two weeks. But after we separated them from them, they were still going to stay in orbit. We were preceding them across the west coast of California for one more orbit before we'd fire retros and re-enter. Sixty-seven, isn't that amazing? Well, of course, Gus, next door neighbor, buddy and all that, uh, we went to work and spent a lot of time at Downey. We commuted back and forth from Houston to Downey. A lot of things left open. We call them open items. Got to the Cape, still had a whole bunch of open items. Start build, rebuilding the spacecraft practically there, and it was rather discouraging. So we had a test where my crew, the backup crew, would run through all the procedures, switch work, checkouts, countdown, in shirt sleeves with a normal atmosphere environment, where in turn Grissom and his crew would do it the next day in the pure oxygen environment, in their suits. Well, the night before debriefing what I had done, privately with Gus and Joe Shea, who was our project manager. I said, Gus, there's things I, I, I just don't feel comfortable. There, there, there's some anomalies that aren't working out right. And if something goes wrong and you don't like it, get the hell out of there. So I'll never forget Gus in the taped remark he made. I was not, I was flying an airplane at that point in time from the Cape back to Houston. But Gus said something about That was the time to get the hell out of there. That was an anomaly, a communications anomaly. You think about holding up the shuttle because one of four sensors didn't work properly, and here they are in a pure oxygen environment, a deadly place to be. They have a, they have a plaque at the bottom commemorating the loss of three, but they should have a plaque celebrating three finally got off. Chris, we had this national commitment, and I use the word commitment very carefully, and I believe that young President Kennedy made a commitment for this nation to send man to the moon and back within this decade. And so anything that came in sequence to that was in the way. We had to get it done, and done successfully, so we'd go on and do another one. And that whole team of Huntsville that went to work on that, I just can't believe how well they organized it. Yes, we didn't, we didn't delay our Saturn 1B because of the booster. We delayed because we made a mistake on the spacecraft. And the booster had been perfectly prepared every time. And when we went through countdown on Apollo 7, I said, I can't believe this is working so perfectly. And boom, we lifted off. Well, it turned out quite frequently, and particularly after Apollo 1, so-called 1 disaster, people were really shook up. And I said, levity is a lubricant of crises. That's when I became Jolly Wally once in a while.
I was ordered by Werner, whenever there's a group of people, more than five or ten, Vali, tell the astronaut story, please. This is before we landed on the moon. Yeah, Werner, I tell the astronaut story. We well, have to imagine in your mind, if you don't mind my telling the story, these two spacecraft land on the moon simultaneously. One has CCCP, the other one has US, uh, USA on it. Out of one comes a cosmonaut, out of the one comes an astronaut. They walk over to each other and put their bubble helmets together. Hello, Hans. Hello, Fritz. Now we speak German. <laughs> But I'll never forget sitting on the, in the so-called CBS control room with Walter, thinking, my gosh, here I am with the world-class commentator, the, the man who the whole nation respects. What am I going to say when my friends get out and walk on the moon? So we're off camera. I said, Walter, is it possible uh, you have some profound remarks that you uh, might share with me about what you'll say when these men get on the moon. Well, I, 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 I'm sure, yes, Jeff, of course. Um, thanks, Walter. So <laughs> about ten times, all during these various sequences when we're off camera, I asked Walter the same question. Each time the same, <laughs> So finally they land on the moon, and Walter, this great profound spokesman for the world, goes, golly, gee, wow. This, this tore me up. During the prep time, we get a newspaper, I think it was the New York Times, which people read in those days, back in the 60s, had headlines, follow the flight of Apollo 11 to the moon with Walter-to-Walter -Walter coverage. Who got top billing, Walter? <laughs> I will never forget, Ed Buckby sent me a report, which is about a 10 or 12 page report on how to go to Mars that was presented by Werner within less than a month after we landed on the moon. I'm talking about August of 1969 was the date of that report. I had tears in my eyes when I started reading it. Everything was there, laid out completely on how to go to Mars and back. Notice I say and back, I learned the end back from Mr. Kennedy and also I like to confirm my round trip. <laughs> oh, it would be in somewhere in the 80s. This was 69. Now what, what's, what's interesting about Werner is that he, my favorite visualization of Werner in an engineering meeting, Werner cheering it, particularly in Huntsville, but it could be in, in uh, Houston as well, and Werner's making a presentation about some of the work that's being done by his team on the S-1B or the S-4B or the, S or the Saturn V, and he said, well, no, we have this idea here where we can improve this, uh, where we... Fritz, you tell him it was your idea. He gave credit to Fritz instead of doing it himself. Now that is a real leader. And I've yet to meet a staff man that doesn't have that same opinion of Werner, that Werner would always make it a team effort, not just Werner thought of it. And that really hit me very deeply. Could not have done it without it. We knew those people were on our team. And that is the, be the best thing I can ever say about anybody who was involved in those days, part of the team. The nation was committed, but the engineers and the technicians that gave so much extra time, overtime didn't even count in those days. Talk about feeling emotional about how people worked as a team. We couldn't have done without operational support for the booster and the sense of confidence we had from hearing who was working on it. Well, we need that team to run the next booster, there's no doubt about it. We may, we may end up using parts of the shuttle system, parts of other stuff, that's all going to be resolved. But the people now to put things together come out of Huntsville. Someone asked me, Wally, would you like to fly in the shuttle like John Glenn? Hell no, I'm not that old. <laughs>